the last line defense meetup. Um, this this is a, a weekly Thursday meetup that we're going that we have. Um, the reason why I, I started this meetup is because when I was in the military, no one talked about real estate. Um, they talked about TSP. They talked about saving money. They talked about debt, but no one talked about real estate. Um, and a lot of times when people deploy, just in my experience, when they come back, um, they come back with, you see a lot more Dodge charges, pickup trucks on the road. A lot of people don't get into real estate um, buying appreciating value items. So I want to change that. I want to have a, a meetup where military and civilians can learn more about real estate and um, my different guest speakers I have are different niches in real estate. So today, um, my guest speaker is Hutch, the Marine Investor. Um, before I introduce Hutch, um, I want to give this a little background about myself and I want to ask others if they can speak about their about real estate journey. So um, I'll start first. Um, I've only been doing real estate really for a year and a half. Uh, the reason why I got into real estate was because um, I was at my current job, Boeing, someone told me, say, Hey, you know, you're going to be here for another 20 years. And I'm like, I don't want to be here for another 20 years, even though I love the job. So, um, that's why I uh, went into a real, into an entrepreneur, uh, journey and, uh, led me to real estate. I've been doing wholesaling, a little bit of Airbnb, and now I'm starting a capital raise a business. So pretty excited about everything that's going on, but I have a lot of work to do, but I'm really excited. So, um, Eric, how about yourself? All right, so I am a retired Coast Guard veteran. Um, been landlording, actually, I was landlording long ago back in the uh, early 2000s. And, you know, as you do it in the military, you just kind of pick up a few here and there. Um, did that for, for some time. And then I realized it's okay, that's, that's great because I, I met some really good um, folks in, in the Coast Guard that were just landlords, you know, and, and, and that was my exposure. I think that's what we get as an exposure for real estate. Um, so I kind of put that away. I said, okay, I'll, I'll just let it go, let it do its thing. And then I jumped uh, out of the military, went into oil and gas, uh, started buying assets, the oil and gas assets. And, and these were big, big deals. And I said, you know what, if, if I can do that, why can't I uh, start doing that on, on real estate at the bigger scale? So I went to the small multifamily, uh, took down a few and, and those are good. And then it just wasn't really filling me uh, to the point of now, now what, right? So I do some private money. I actually invest in notes. Uh, I've got a focus this year to basically go into residential assisted living. And, and that is my focus. Um, that, that's going to be my, my lane coming up here. Uh, I just got off the phone with uh, a few guys with the association that I'm with. And we're going to be doing some good things here this year. Yeah, yeah, I... I... Yeah, man, we definitely want to be a guest speaker later on, man. That definitely, uh, that's definitely something I want to talk about um, and have a guest speaker talk about. Yeah, I'll actually be speaking at one of the. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll pass you some details, but I've got I've got a slide deck. I've got some stuff going, and I think I think there's a huge need for it, and we can definitely catch up. Okay. Actually, um, um, um Aaron, I, I had to, to break into. I think um, can I also um, um hook up with you because I, I do have a uh, investment group. Um, with some folks and I'm, I'm just um, trying to see if I can introduce note investing. In fact, I got a couple books I'm ordering on real estate note, note investing, one by Ron, uh, I forget his name. Um, um, yeah, so I would love to be able to, to get with you on that if, if, if it's all right. Yes. Is that me? <laughs> yes. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. And I, I mean, if you guys hang on, I'll just you put you guys in a uh, breakout room as well. Um, Greg, what's you, what's you talk about yourself, man? All right. Um, okay, I'm gonna start with my son. I'll keep working. Uh, <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna zoom right now, sweetheart. All right. Hey, sorry guys. Um, yeah. So wait, my name is Greg Greg Dion. Um, I'm actually in the Air Force. I am on the verge of retiring. I've been in for about 21 and a half years, and I'm actually doing what's called a Skill Bridge program. And so, as part of this Skill Bridge program, I'm I'm working with a property manager, so I can learn property property management. I've been interested in, in investing for a while. I, I invest in stock, those kind of things, but I caught the real estate bug back in 2015 when I was getting ready to leave Guam. And, I, and so I was getting ready to leave Guam and I have a good friend who's still out there. Um, and we went to this real estate investment with, um, with this, this couple from, is it flipping Vegas? I think or something like that. Um, 
and and they only showed up for like for like a few minutes just to sort of said a few words but i i kind of saw the the, possi- the possibilities got into reading a lot of things on it and i bid my time after guam went to germany just got got myself um ready did a lot, a lot of reading a lot of studying and <clears throat> now i am actually a realtor so i got my real estate license so that i can actually be able to get a better and a deeper breadth of understanding of real estate and i'm moving toward becoming a syndicator so i'm part of john casman's team with aaron that's where which is where, where we met and yeah looking to syndicate in the states of florida alabama georgia and i think louisiana yeah and so um i got i got a little, little commentary next to me over here doing i'm trying to do his homework <laughs> um, and yeah so that, that's where i'm at i'm just here to, to learn and um and however i can help guys feel free to ask okay so yeah but about to retire i'm ready i'm ready ready all right all right all right um heath if you have a minute i know you're eating right now with family but could you introduce yourself if you if you can absolutely <clears throat> so Keith Jones. Um, I currently work for the Army as a GS, or as Hutch calls it, I'm gangster support. Um, <laughs> I uh, originally started as a DOD contractor. Uh, I'm a neuroscientist by trade. Uh, I was, you know, going to be teaching at a university. You know, that's kind of the typical track, but then got offered this job where I get to do a lot of cool uh, stuff, helicopters and firearms and things like that. So pretty cool doing that research. Um, but whenever I became GS, uh, I took a big pay cut about 15% and needed to make money fast <laughs> to make up for that. I Googled, how do I make money fast? And there was like 22 side hustles to make more money, start a blog. And I'm like, no, start a YouTube channel. I'm like, I'm not a YouTuber. <laughs> And then I came across real estate. I'm like, oh, that makes sense. I, I buy a property and then I cash a rent check each month. That, that's cool. And so uh, my wife and I came up with a plan that we we're going to buy one property a year for five years. And we're like, oh, that's cool. But, you know, the best deals were only like $200 of cash flow a month. And I was like, man, we need more than that. We need to go multifamily. So we decided to start real estate in January of 2019. And by April, uh, fourth, we had 20 units. We had a four unit and a 16 unit. The four unit, I was able to buy with the 401k for my contracting job. I cashed that out. 16 unit, had no idea how I was going to pay for it. Got it under contract and had zero dollars in the account, zero anything. So um, came up with some creative ways to get the down payment funded and, you know, ended up getting it. And then just those two true properties alone replaced the income that I had lost. I'm like, well, holy crap, man. Like I could do, this could really, you know, if I, if I did this once or twice a year, you know, I could be financially free, you know, a lot sooner than I had imagined. So that's kind of where I got into it. Met Hutch at uh, Dealmaker Live in Dallas. Uh, we were both looking in the Huntsville market. He was in Pensacola, I was in Enterprise, Alabama. Started driving. A bunch together, eight hours up to Huntsville and back. Well, four hours up there, eight, four hours back. And uh, just been plugging away ever since. Now, collectively, we have 242 units um, that we've acquired. So just looking to uh, start our march to, we started our march to a thousand doors. I'm sure Hutch will talk more about it. Um, and so uh, I'll leave that for him. But Thanks for having me on. Thanks for putting this together. I think it's awesome what you're doing, and you got some you got some rock stars in here right now. So uh, happy to be a part of it. Yeah, thank, thank you, man. Thank you, thank you. Uh, last but not least, well, I I, I I would say Lawrence another time. I mean, he don't need no introduction. He we are everybody knows who Lawrence Laddie is, but um, Bethany Smith, how you doing? I'm doing great. How are you guys doing? Good, good, good. Can you introduce yourself to everybody? Yeah, for sure. Um, Bethany Smith, my other half, Nate, uh, he's in another appointment at the moment. I'm just going to hop in here in a bit. Um, but we live in Ventura, California, north of Los Angeles, about an hour. Uh, we're real estate investors. We also have a financial services company. 
Um, real estate is kind of my baby. That's what I focus on. We have um, property in Arkansas, a fourplex in Arkansas, uh, got our first apartment complex last year, worked on stabilizing that. It's about 36 units in Southern Arizona. Um, I also help my business partner asset manage three other properties in um, Southern Arizona and the Las Vegas area. So those are our two markets that we're aggressively looking in right now for additional property and um, also passive investors on a portfolio in the Southeast. Um, but multifamily value add projects is definitely what we go after um, C and B class primarily. And um, then financial si services side of things, we help people understand how money works, um, identify retirement strategies, um, help them save money on taxes and that sort of thing. So we call ourselves your cash flow couple is our website and uh, looking forward to meet and get to know all of you. Thanks for, I met you Aaron yesterday at another meetup that was Abel Pachico's on LinkedIn. Lots of really great info. Um, so yeah, just love to network with other other investors and business owners. Yeah, yeah, thank you, thank you, thank you. It was great, great uh, meeting you. Um, and I, um, I, matter of fact, I have a guy in a couple of weeks uh, named Ron, he's gonna tell you about the, the power of LinkedIn and um, it's very, very powerful. And uh, so I'm really excited for that. Thank you. And uh, you might get an email pretty soon. Bethany to be a guest speaker. Just, I'm just letting you know. Oh, cool. Um, awesome. So, <laughs> But uh, you know what? You know what? I, I'm just playing around. I will introduce my man, Lawrence Laddie. Lawrence. I guess he might have stepped out. Hey, oh, everybody. How you doing? Okay. okay. No, Lawrence Laddie here from New York City, pumping gas. It's cold up here. Dag on it. <laughs> but um, I have a, I've I've been doing real estate. Um, my well, actually, my father been doing real estate since '71. And um, I ran, I had a little issues, but I'm back on my feet now. Um, looking to learn more about multifamily and syndication, but um, and looking in different markets, mostly North Carolina and Alabama. I have a two family house here in the Bronx and my um, personal residence also, but I rent the top out, live in a basement. And I'm still working for the transit authority, but this is my last four months coming up. Okay. All right. Congratulations. Thank man. you for Congratulations. thank you for thank you for hosting this. And I can't wait to hear Hutch uh put some fire on us. <laughs> uh yeah, I know, right? right. I know. I'm I'm very, very excited um for this, man. So without further ado, I want to introduce our guest speaker, Hutch the Marine Investor. Um and Hutch, please take it away, sir. Um you, you know how to do your story better than me. So please take it away. All righty. I appreciate it, brother. Let me get set up here. Screen sharing. Boom, boom. Here we go. Let me go full size in this thing. Here we go, full size. Play. All right. All right, boom. All right, so I know most of you, we have been in some kind of meetup, some way, shape or form. We connected on LinkedIn, we connected on Facebook, Instagram. So a lot of you know me as Hutch, the Marine Investor. Well, my real name is actually Shalon Hutchinson. So why did I change it to Hutch, the Marine Investor? As we all know, in real estate, marketing is which way it's at. We are more of a marketer than we are just the some syndicators because the, that person with the, the best marketing will attract the most people as we all know that, right? So I just want to let you know before we get into the syndication stuff that every single one of you here is special. We see the Vin the Chopper, we see the Neil Bauer, the Michael Blanc, the Uncle G's of this world. They possess this a lot of the same qualities that we have, right? And we are just as special as they are. All right, so let's dive into a little bit more about who I am. Whoa, get this out of How do we get this moving? I think you had to hit the button. I had problems too with that. I think you just had to hit the button or just go to the, um, to the other side and like just go slide by slide. I always had trouble with that as well when I do when I do presentations. Try hitting your space bar. Okay. Uh, space bar not working either. What the heck? 
My bad. Can you turn my screen straight off a little bit? Uh, do you need to hit the play button like on the top bar? Play, play button. Yeah. Up there on the top left hand side. Yeah, I don't see that. My apologies. over here crap all right Aaron we did check this and all the, everything was working earlier right <laughs> I know right it's all good hush <laughs> um right. yeah but I do see the play button yeah um if you can I don't, I don't yeah see I don't see the play button nothing works mm. Okay. So, so break because you got a Mac. To, yeah, break it down to the to the individual slides then. Yeah, um, escape. Nothing. Hit escape. Yeah, hit escape, and it should go back to the individual slides. Nothing works. Sorry. Get a PC. Ain't nobody, ain't nobody doing that. Ah. <laughs> no, get save the Mac. Exactly. So I actually had the same issue a couple of days ago. I was presenting something to an underwriter, and I, you probably have multiple screens, Hutch. Probably multiple screens. Do you have multiple screens, or do you have just one? Just one. Just okay. one. Pause. Yeah. Maybe try to stop sharing and reshare. Maybe you're sharing the wrong. I only sharing one. Okay. Uh, let me see. You talking about screen sharing? Yeah, how are you sharing your, your screen? Maybe like stop share and then go share again. Yeah, stop share. Can you turn on my screen share, Aaron? Uh, All right, here we go. Got my mouse back. How about that? Yeah. Can you turn back on? Yeah, I want to see your face now. Uh, let's see. It's a good thing we can edit these videos, right? <laughs> exactly, exactly. All right, can you turn my screen share back on? Okay. There it is, okay. All right, this, so this is not going to be as fun as we thought it was going to be. All right, <laughs> okay. So, back at it. Everyone is special, right? We all we all came into this world being super special. So, a little bit, a little bit about myself. I like to say I have some Jamaican roots. Why? Why is that important to me? Because look, when you're raised in a different country, it, you have a paradigm that is consistent with the way of living over there, right? So, growing up in Jamaica, um, we grew up in a concept where. It takes a village to raise a child. So I had a lot of cousins, uncles, aunties around us. Now, the caveat to that is there's not a whole lot of parental supervision. So children are, are, are afforded the opportunity to become very resourceful. So I appreciate that about having that roots in Jamaica. Now, American by choice, I fin fin finished all the paperwork back in 2000, 2006 to become a citizen. And that, that provided me with the opportunity to, to do anything that I wanted to do in, in the military as far as getting a seat for clearance and get the jobs that I want. And that was important to me. I'm a father of these, these three beautiful babies. As some folks would call them tax credits. I just like to call them three beautiful babies, right? Um, a husband of a beautiful wife, a, a relationship up, a married up, beautiful lady, oh my goodness. Um, my little, my Hawaiian queen. I've been in the Marine Corps for the past um, 22 years. Best mistake that I've ever made, and every four to five years, I made that mistake over and over again. I'm loving being a part of this professional gun club. It has offered me so many opportunities, so many to be, to include me being in this exact position right now to be able to talk to you, right? So, what do I do when I'm not marining? Once a marine, always a marine, right? But there comes a point where the uniform has to come off, and the, the traditional thing to do is to transition 
that skill, all the skills that we have we have earned or we have um, gained over the past 20 years out into into the civilian sector as a GS job or government contractor, so on and so forth. But that is not where my passion lays. Little known fact is that Athena tell me one day, like Hutch, I mean, she, I said, she called me Shalon, Shalon. I am concerned. I believe whenever you retire, you're going to wake up Saturday morning, you're going to get in a uniform, you're going to sit there on the couch. And th that, that, that made her a concern, right? So she's concerned. So now I'm fascinated, right? So I had to fix that. So what am I passionate about? I'm super passionate about real estate. So we started the transition. We were doing some single family flips, um, buying holes as well. And we realized that was a job and that didn't really fuel my passion and purpose. So we transitioned in 2019 to syndication. And in 2020, my partner, Dr. Heath Jones and I formed H Squared Capital. All right, so enough about me. As we go through this presentation, right? There are going to be three takeaways. The cool thing about these takeaways is like, look, nothing that I'm about to pass, that I'm about to tell you is real to you at this present moment. They only exist in my brain housing group and on this PowerPoint. But as the words flow out my mouth, something will speak to you. It might be my words, but it also might be your own intuition that's telling you things about yourself and the things that you are capable of. Now, when those thoughts come to you, what I want for you to do is take a pen, pen and paper and write that thought down. It could be something that I said, and it could be something that, that came from your, from your own thoughts. You have about five seconds until that thought disappears, and I believe you move on to somebody else. Now, now the things that you write down based on your, your communication between your intuition and the things that I said, and, and you, that is how you find meaning in some of the information that I will be passing. Now, look, there is this four-letter word. Now, trust me, it's, it's a really bad word. It's a really bad word, and sometimes we don't even want to say it, right? So these little four-letter four word, um, why does it exist? This four-letter word that starts with, with F, right? That's the F word. Why does it exist? It exists to keep us in a moment, and in the moment, we can feel so much pleasure. It's like going through, going through life wearing protection, right? We feel so much pleasure, so it's kind of there to protect us, right? But after that, after that protection, right, comes some pain. Because look, that F word is gonna prevent you from all the things outside of that moment that could affect your life, that could affect your life, right? And where does that, where does that F word exist? It exists only in a brain housing group. And of course, I'm talking about the word fear, fear. As we know it, is the false evidence appear false evidence appearing real. See, we oftentimes lie to ourselves. We lie to ourselves about how challenging things are going to be, right? Or how easy things are going to be. And the things that challenges us is usually based on our own inner thoughts, or we share something that we want to do with our immediate circle. Those people that identify with us, our friends, our families, right, or co our coworkers, people that we think are on our same level. So look, when we realize that our pa current paradigm might need to be shifted, we start looking for people that looks like us. And that is a very misunderstood statement. See, in 2019, that's exactly what I did. I started looking for people that look like me. And when that statement is used sometimes, people, people usually think you're talking about your complexion. But look, the greatest place that we exist is in our spirituality that has no color, right? It doesn't have any shapes, right? But it's filled with pure possibilities. And when we surround ourselves with people that have the paradigm that identify with the success that we want to achieve, oh man, it's a game changer. Look, recently, the Mega Million and the Powerball was up to close to a billion dollars. And I'm almost positive that at least one person that is on this call envisioned what they could do if they win close to a billion dollars. I'm pretty confident that it, that includes helping your family, right? Um, 
creating generational, that would be generational wealth. So how can I invest this money? How many apartment complex would you buy? How can you help out your church? How can you help out an organization that you feel so strongly about? The cool thing about that is we have the same capability. And we don't have to wait until we win the lottery to create that kind of vision that we want for our lives, right? We don't have to wait. Look, the lottery, Powerball, Mega Million, it, there's no shame in their game. They will let you know that I don't care who you are. You have one in 76 million chance of winning this lottery, right? And in a minute, I'm gonna, I'm gonna let you know that, you, that you're a winner. Every one of us is already a winner, right? So our dream of life, our dream that we have in life, it is our responsibility to take charge of them. See, my good friend and mentor indirectly, Les Brown, he often talks about what will the end of your life be like? No one wish that they work longer hours. No one wish that, you know, some of the things that we hold on to right now. But the best way to die that Les Brown talk about is to be laying on your deathbed of old age, surrounded by your friends and family. And everyone is crying or they're celebrating your birth, whatever the case may be. They're there for you because they love you and they know they're going to miss you. But what if that's not the case? What if at the end of our lives, we're laying there on our deathbed and we are surrounded by our dreams. See, the things that come to us, I believe that they come in the form of energy and it's our duty, our responsibility and our obligations to take action on those dreams. So imagine laying there on your deathbed and all your dreams and aspirations surround you and say, we came to you and only you can give, could have given us life. And Come back to your present moment. Now, what kind of life do you want to create for yourself? See, there's a survey that was done back in, back in 2013, and I'm pretty confident with 2020, it has gotten worse. Approximately a third of Americans, that's over 100 million people, right, that is not satisfied with their life. That is a lot of people, right? So imagine if you can go to the future through your imagination. I was speaking to this gentleman yesterday, a great friend of mine, a great mentor, super inspirational. And he's telling me that with the control of his thoughts, he's able to go to the future and communicate with his future self and identify those checks and balances and those steps that he will take to get to the best version of himself in five years. We all have that capability, but how often do we use it? And when we use it, how often do we take action on those thoughts and ideas, all right? So what I want for you to do at this present moment is the life, write down three things about the life that you want to create for yourself. These are your words, your big audacious goals, right? The first thing you write down, let it be something that of, of yourself that you yourself has a burning desire to accomplish, a burning desire. And the next two things you want to you, you write down doesn't necessarily have to be two additional goals. It could be two things that support your big audacious goals. One being, if I do this, I will be able to. And if I don't do this, here are the natu natural consequences of not taking such action. I want you to start all those comments with, I am committed to. See. Often we hear these things about, I am attracted to money, I'm a money magnet and all the good stuff. But look, I believe if you, tell you, if you lie to yourself enough time, you, you start believing it, right? But don't lie to yourself. Set up strategic goals to where you can get committed to or become committed to accomplishing those big audacious goals, all right? And look, when you set your commitments, we often hear people talk about, be careful what you wish for. But I, yesterday, as, as I was creating this PowerPoint, I thought about it. And I want to change that to get ready for what you're asking for. Because everything that you ever need and want and desire already exists. It exists in the future. You just have to imagine it in today, right? And take those minute actions until you're able to take massive actions to actually accomplish those things 
that you desire. Now, I'm gonna tell, I tell you earlier, I'm gonna let you know you're a winner. You are sitting here right now because you're a winner. We all did biology or at some point got exposed to little organi organisms racing, racing to little other organisms to create what is now us, right? Did you know that you have one in 400 trillion chance of being you? Being a rat, being a dog, being a plant, or being some minute organism or, or organism on another planet. That's the word always mess, messes me up, <laughs> right? So one in 400 billion chance. So Napoleon Hill talked about, we all have the greatness in us. When we were born into this world, we came here in most cases with two envelopes. We came with sound health, peace of mind, a labor of love. You ever seen a kid? You've all seen the kids, right? Those little buggers, they run around so free spirited, not worrying about things at all, right? Because they got the free, they're free and fair and full of no worries whatsoever, worryless. And they're also born with riches because it's like going into an exam. You walk into an exam, you already have a hundred on your test. Now, the decisions that you make, see, life is the C between B and D. See, that B stands for your birth. That D is when we no longer exist in this realm. That C is filled with the choices that we choose to make throughout our lifetime, right? So I talk about early, I talk about energy, your intuition. A lot of things happen in our life that we can't explain, but we just know that's a decision that we need to make. Bob Proctor said, intuition is God's way of speaking to you. And that comes in the form of energy, which cannot be destroyed. Now, after, when the energy comes to us, we have to take action on those things that come to us. Actions um, create income. So energy plus action equal income. Income gives you the opportunity to make a impact. Impact. All right. So, A Square Capital, the company that Dr. Jones and I created um, approximately a year ago, and we are committed to the march to a thousand doors. Remember earlier I told you to start with we are committed or I am committed. So this is our commitment for the next 24 months. We are committed to syndicating um, 1,000 units in 24 months. Now, we also want to provide information and education and investment opportunity. To, to veterans so they can get their time back. Because look, just like myself, I know if I do not do something that fulfill my passion, I will be in corporate America working, work, corporate America working for the next 20 to 30 years. So our goal is to get veterans their time back. Now, if we don't accomplish that 1,000 doors, see, when we have the power to make an impact, it is the people whose life will be changing, that whose life we could be changing will suffer the most if we do not do the things that we need to do. So if we do not syndicate 1,000 units in the next 24 months, we would have missed the opportunity to provide clean, safe, affordable housing for the working class. And I'm talking about you, the business professional. I'm talking about our teachers, our firemen, our doctors, our lawyers, those people who keep this wheel moving, right? And we are committed to that action. Now, how are we going to do that? Our goal is to syndicate. Now, syndication is a word that not a lot of folks understand in, in, in America, right? So what is syndication? So the syndication is a pool of money from investors to purchase a large piece of real estate that they might not be able to purchase themselves. This is, this is just leverage, right? At one point in time, at least one or two of us on this call lived in our apartment. But look at this beauty. If you live there, it, it is people like us that own that apartment complex. And you too have the possibility of owning a piece of those real estate. So how do you do it? Next couple of slides, I'm gonna break it down for raid rest, military term, right? Simplest, simplest form. I'm going to give you some terminologies that 
that is consistent with understanding education works. So we talk about sponsor, general partners, and managers, and we're gonna talk, we're gonna talk about the passive investors. So the general partner, sponsors, they all, and managers, they're the same thing. It's all about what conversation are we having and how are those terms using, <clears throat> used. So the general partners, they find the deal. Now, how do we find deals? There's a many different ways of how to find deals, right? You can go directly to the owner because you know somebody that owns an apartment and you say, Mr. Owner, Mr. John, um, are you considering selling the apartment? And yes, actually I am, right? Or no, get away from me, right? <laughs> or you build a relationship with different commercial brokers and whenever they get a listing, they will contact you if your relationship is solid enough. So you get the deal, you reply to the broker, let them know what you think. You, you submit a letter of intent, LOI, and this is a non-binding binding agreement that says, based on the information that you are providing, provided me, Mr. Broker and Mr. Mr. Seller, here is what I am willing to offer for this property. So I can provide a return from my, from my, passive, from my passive investors and myself. So that's the LOI. We, it's negotiated and then we go to contract. Once we get into contract, then just like a single family home, I'm pretty sure anyone, one, one of us or most of us have already purchased a single family home. We need a earnest money deposit, EMD, right? And that can come in many, many shape or forms. It can come from your pocket or someone on the team. Now, that general partners, they ensure that the deal is compliant. And I will talk about some of the compliance as we go along. And the general partner, they raise money, they, they complete the due diligence, and this is the physical due diligence. So there's a lot of documentation that is involved with this process, right? So the information that we are presented, presented by the seller through the broker, um, it has the way the property has been performing um, for, for three few years, but the ones that we were most concerned about is the last, the trailing 12, the T12. And we use that to analyze their deal. Now, up until the point of actually going to the property, we are for, we, all we're looking at is paperwork. Now, when we get to the property, we're looking at the physical structure of the property. We walk in each unit. We're talking to the property manager. We're talking to the residents to identify what is the future best and highest use of this piece of real estate, right? And then we create a business plan based on what we find and we establish an asset manager who's a part of a team to manage that asset. Now, for the passive investors, also known as limited partners, and it's limited partner because you have limited responsibility throughout the hold of this property, right? And your risk is only as much as the money that you are putting in to the project. So if you put in $50,000 into a real estate syndication that have met all the checks and balances in accordance with the Security and Exchange Commission, then your liability is only um, to the extent of the money that you invest into the, that real estate, right? Well, additionally, you're responsible for agreeing to the terms, all terms and condition of the deal, and you commit to the deal. Um, and this private placement memorandum, it's usually a 50 to 100 plus page document, but it's very, it's super important because this is where you get an in-depth understanding of all your risks. Even risks that will never, never come up throughout the whole time. Um, our, lawyer, our lawyers ensure that we cover almost every single possible risk that are issue that could come up throughout this. Uh, of course, then you commit to your fund, your fund, and you may have some voting rights, but in most cases, you don't. The general partner, partners control the voting rights. Any questions so far? Too fast, too slow? All right, so how did, how is it structured? So syndication entity. So this is this diagram on the right. I could break it down parade rest, but let me just, just wait top, right? So syndication structure, the entity is established. Now, each property that is, that is purchased has is purchased under its own limited liability company. And here's why that is important. Because you want the capital preservation, we want to ensure that the money in that property is protected from any other issues of any other properties your syndicator might purchase. So each multifamily property is, is purchased under a, a, its own LLC. 
So the entities establish the Class A shares, those are purchased by the passive investors. Class A shares, you at the top of the line, you get paid before the Class B shares get paid, right? The business plan is ex executed after closing and business plan could be simple as going into the property and simply raise the rent. Could be that simple. Or it could be going to the property, change over the entire management structure, implement a, a better maintenance personnel, also do an extensive renovation of the property. So it could get really extreme and very intrusive of executing the business plan. And this is something that is laid out upfront down to the numbers to the passive investor before any money is wired. So if you do not have the warm and fuzzy about how that property will be managed and some of the roadblocks that blocks that they will come across, um, you should not wire your money. Make sure you have a very in-depth understanding of the business plan and how it will be executed, who the asset manager will be and his, your, is he or she competent in executing this business plan, right? So after the property is closed, usually there's a delay in, in um, distribution of funds and not all syndicators does this, but this is what we do. We ensure that our property managers can actually get into the property and streamline the process of effective management, effective and efficient management and get to learn, learn the property a little bit. And then, then about um, month six, is when we start making distribution to our passive investors. All right, the profit, the profit is split and some of the profit goes to the passive investors, limited partners, and the remaining goes to the general partners. Now, how does that break down? The typical breakdown structure as far as profit splitting goes is, is usually 75-25. That's 75% of the income the, the monthly income this is distributed on a quarterly basis, 75% um, of the cash flow goes to the limited partner and 25% goes to the general partners, right? Also at this, this position, meaning we sell the property, 75% of the proceeds from sale go to the passive investors and 25% of the proceeds from sales go to the active investors. Now, we, we do have some constraints when syndicating. And as a syndicator, this is something that we have to make a decision. How are we going to do business? And the Security and Exchange Commission, Regulation D, has two separate par paragraphs that are section that we can syndicate property under. And we're, we typically use 506B, right? So in the 506B, we cannot solicit to anyone about a deal that we have on contract. Say for example, I had a property on a contract right now, um, ABC um, Main Street, or 123 Main Street. And Nate wanted to invest in multifamily. And this is our first phone call. I can't be like, Nate, I really need to get to know you. Let's get to know you real fast so I can get into this property. No, no, no. We have to have a pre-existing relationship and also a, sub, a substantive relationship, substantive, substantive relationship, meaning that we have spoken about real estate, Nate understands the risk associated with investing real estate, right? And also they understand how money works. That's important. Now, the pre-existing relationship, meaning we just have a relationship before the money is wired into our account. And there's variation of understanding about that process as well, right? So under, under the 506B, it's limited to 35 sophisticated investors. Sophisticated investors is just all those folks who are not um, accredited investors, but have an understanding of the benefits and also the risk associated with investing in a multifamily property. Now for accredited investors, this means that they have a net worth of over a million dollars um, or they may, their, their income is $200,000 or more with the expectation of making $200,000 in the next income year, year or jointly with their spouse, um, $300,000 $300, in income per year. Now, 506C, um, we have all heard about Grant Cardone, right? And how he comes on the internet and see, I got this deal, one through three main streets, so on and so forth, right? So they do more for 506C. So they can, they can advertise to, to the masses. The caveat is they can only, they can only take money 
from accredited investors. All right, so coming, coming to the, towards the end of it right now. Now, why do we prefer syndication? See, a lot of us, we, we buy a single family home because that is the American dream. Go to school, get a job, buy a single family house, get married, have about two and a half children or two children or three children, two dogs, two birds in my case, right? That's, that's the American dream, right? But as we grow and as we change your network and as we improve our network and as, our, as we have that paradigm shift, we get to understand how money works and how we can use it to our advantage to affect our future, then we start looking for new opportunities. And that's what happens to Heath and I. We start looking for new opportunities and syndication is the one that sits well with us. So in syndication, they give us the ability to to purchase bigger deals. Remember, syndication is the pooling of money from investors to purchase a bigger deal than, than they themselves could purchase um, by themselves, right? So it also gives us access to billions of dollars, actually OPM. We can invest, use leveraging other people's money because look, buying 167 units apartment complex in Augusta, Georgia is no easy purchase, right? And Maybe one of us, one or two of us on this call can, is able to afford the almost $4 million raise that we had to do to purchase that property. Maybe, right? And we can buy the property ourselves, but that's not always the case. And we have always heard the term that money in the bank is, depreci is depreciated in value. But so we understand that we need to get our money to work for us. But not only are we getting our money to work for us, we are leveraging other people's money to purchase bigger assets so we can reduce the risk associated with investing in, in real estate, right? Also, when purchasing large commercial properties, we are not the one that are, that have to qualify for the loan. The property that we get, in, that we are purchasing qualifies for, qualify for itself based on its ability to produce a predetermined amount of income that can cover all the expenses cover your debt services, and also generate a, a favorable return for yourself and your investor or you as a passive investor. We also get the economy of scale because look, my partner, Eve, one of the things that him, him and Amy thought about before they actually got into the multifamily space is they could buy a home, a, a single family house, one a year or one every five years, whatever the case may be, Right, and over 30 years, those homes will be paid off and they can reap the cash flow. But when you look at the economy of scale, it takes a very long time to scale in a single family space. But not to mention, when you look at Pensacola, so for example, you, you own 100 units of single family homes in Pensacola. That is spread out across several miles. So the ability, the ability, the ability to, to um, have operation efficiency becomes very challenging as compared to having 100 units on, on say a 10 acre lot that is in one location. We can put a property manager in place and they can do all the things that we need to do with certain supervision from our asset manager to ensure that the business plan is executing efficiently, effectively, and also on time, right? Also the bank, the financial institution, the government, they, they love the multifamily assets. Because look, when you think about the Great Recession back in 2008, 2009, so on and so forth, right? And you look at the default rate in, say for instance, single family, the default rate was, four, was, was right, averaging, averaging right around 4%. But for multifamily, it was, it was about approximately 0 0.04, significantly lower than that of the single family space. And why is that? Because look, if you have 100 units of multifamily in, a, in the same, same location, you have reserve, you have effective management, you're taking care of your maintenance, and you have two people that move out, you are still ha at 98% occupancy. So you're still able to cover your expenses, your debt services, and also still provide a favorable return for your investors. So the, the financial institution, they appreciate the, the, the safety, 
to promote, promote safety, capital preservation that comes with investing in a syndication. All right, so for the passive investors, what are some of the things that they look for in a real estate syndication? Look, a lot of the things that we do is all about mindset. And when Heath and I talk to a passive investor, there's a couple of things that we want to know from them and a couple of the things that we will provide to them. So one of the big ones is to understand their train of thoughts. Where are they in their life? See, their risk tolerance. Tolerance usually comes with our ability to withstand a feeling or emotion. How attached are they to them to their money? What is their paradigm? What is their understanding of how money actually works? So we talk about that. We also talk about their risk capacity because look, people take several years to save fifty to one hundred thousand dollars, that's that's a lot. In a, in a lot of cases, that is somebody's life saving that they're looking to entrust us as the, as the, the sponsor, syndicator, operator with that capital. So we want to ensure that look, if they're going to invest this capital, they have the risk capacity. If they lose their job, are they able to maintain their lifestyle with their reserves, right? And also, in some cases, we talk to some passive investors, and they're looking for capital preservation. I was in a conversation a few months ago with an investor. It was like, I don't need a whole bunch of money on a monthly or quarterly basis. I just need to put this X amount of money someplace to where I don't have to pay a whole bunch of taxes. So it's really important for Heath and I to really understand where you, where you are as a passive investor. Now, are you investing for capital preservation? Or are you just investing for cash flow? See, we had a conversation with, with an investor recently. And it's, a, it's a cool story that Heath and I like to tell is that the investor said, we, we was telling, telling the investor about all the cool things that we can do with depreciation and force appreciation and all that good stuff. And she's like, Hutch, Heath, I cannot take appreciation or depreciation to the grocery store. And that was like, oh man, got it. So it's really important that as an active investor, communicating with a passive investor, we understand what they're looking for, where are they in their life, and what, why, what is their why, and what are they looking for, what are their investment goals and criteria for investing in multifamily um, properties. Now, we also let them know that, look, um, we might not be the best fit for you, depends on what you're looking for. So it's up to you to ensure that you ask enough questions to understand who we are as a team. How is, how is their team structured? Who is in charge? Who makes certain, certain decisions? What are different level, levels of responsibility? And understanding that, taking that information and ensure that we build credibility enough with you for you to trust us. So there's three things that a passive investor needs to understand when they're going into, going into a real estate syndication. And that's that know, like, and trust, right? So do I know this person? Do I like this person? Because look, once you, once you wire that money, that money is invested for a good five, six, I mean, three, five, 10, or many, or many years, or many years, the business plan is executed for, right? So it's important that you know, like, and eventually trust that people that you're working with, syndicators or passive investors. Two things over here on the right, that passive investors and active investors looked at is when you're looking at a market, the job growth is important. Now, why is that important? See, when we, when we take on our properties, we want to ensure that we're able to lease those units up if the, if the vacancy is hot, if it's a property that has higher vacancy, right? We want to ensure that there's enough job growth in the area to fill those empty units. Population growth, we want to make sure that there's people move into the area to sustain the long-term business plan. And we also want to make sure there's income growth because look, every year the goal is to raise the rent to the market value or to, yeah, to, the, market, to the market going rate to ensure that we can continue to create favorable return for investors. And additionally, we want to ensure that we are able to beat inflation. So the time value of your money increase instead of depreciate. All right, and also we're looking for property growth. Are the single family and condo prices going up or are they going down? For, for the deal itself, 
there was a deal cash flow day one. And if, if it does not cash flow day one, what is the plan to get it to cash flow in a timely manner? And in that time, what is the active investor's responsibility to the passive investors as far as their return on their investments? For Heath and I, we're looking for class B and C property with a value added opportunity, 50, 50 units and above in the Southeast. Why do we like value add property? See, for, if you bought a house that was renovated back in the 80s with, with what was going on in the 80s and your pink bathtub and your purple toilets and the yellow sink or whatever the case may be, right? At some point, that property needs to be improved. And the same thing applies to, to multifamily properties. As we walk a property, we want to look at it and we look at the, comp the, the comparable properties around the area. And we want to make sure that we can improve the property so we can get to its highest and best use. So we like this one of the biggest reasons why we like the value added opportunity. And of course, our exit plan is usually a prior to COVID. It was five years, but now we're pushing it to six to eight years to ensure that we can, we can um, make favorable returns for investors. Because look, there's still, a lot, there's still a lot of unknowns in 2021 going on into 2022. We all understand that with all these stimulus that's coming into the market, kind of gives a false indication of where we are, exact, where we, exactly where we are as an economy. And as we know, real estate usually log, lag the economy by approximately six months, but the economy has been propped up by all these stimulus. So when we underwrite a property, we are looking at about 12 to 24 months, no rent growth. That does, that does not mean we won't increase the rent, but the increase that we're looking for is to meet that, uh, that market value or the going market value of today's um, rental income. All right, so this is my business partner, that good looking guy pointing to the future, right? And that's where we're going. We all have the, we all have the potential to reach into the future bringing that I thought an idea to the present and do something about it. So we host the, the multifamily real estate experiment podcast. We got 50 episodes published and we bring on some very experienced guests. Each week we talk about a specific topic that, that has to do with multifamily real estate or real estate syndication. Also, we talk to a lot of providers that the service complements real estate syndication. This is our last property that we purchased back in December. And if you want to get a hold of us, is a, you can reach us at, at Hutch at H squared capital or, or Heath at H squared capital, or you can get, a, get on our website at H squared capital and we have a operation manual on, my, on our website for your download. Wow. wow. Nice. Yeah. Um... Great presentation, Hutch. Great, great presentation, man. Um, awesome, awesome. Um, does anybody have any questions for Hutch? Um, yeah, actually, Hutch. what was, um, actually, since the last time I was gonna talk. Go ahead, man, go ahead, go ahead. Hey, Hutch, thank you so much. Um, yeah, I can I can connect with you. I'm, I'm from Haiti, so we, so we're some planting, planting eating folks over here. Um, <laughs> um, yeah, I, um, I forgot to, God, I didn't, I didn't write down your, your, um, podcast. So I'm just trying, trying to quickly get, get back to my notes so I can write that down. So what's, what's the name of the podcast again or the, the show? Can you hear me? The Multifamily Real Estate Experiment. Okay. Yeah. I'm just gonna type it up so I can make sure I find it. Appreciate that. Thank you. Please, if you if you like the episode, leave us a comment. Um, okay. A truthful comment will be a true thought. <laughs> Experiment. Got it. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Hey, Hutch, Eric here. Um, yes, have you guys seen anything uh, major uh, in the change over the last six months? And what do you foresee in syndication, in the realm of syndication, in the next three years? Ooh. So in the last six months, um, on, the, on the properties that we operate in, 
um, we had a couple of tenants that didn't pay. Now the challenge is we cannot evict them, right? So and I know a lot of operators are, are dealing with that um, due to the eviction moratorium where we can't we can't we can't keep them out. But the property that we purchased recently um, in, in Augusta, Georgia, it's in a unique area, and the judge that is there um, favors the landlord, right? Especially if the tenants have a job and they're able to pay their rent and they have, if they're not paid the rent, chances are the judge will rule in favor of the of the of the owners. So we got some states that, that works with the owners, but some places are really hurting. We see places like New York where people are moving out by the by the thousands, right? If you get on the U-Haul website, you're able to see exactly what state is losing population um, based on U-Haul track and um, the one-way travel of those um, truck rentals, right? So we see a lot of folks moving in, moving into Florida. A lot of folks moving into the Carolinas, a lot of folks move, moving from um, California over to over to Arizona. Also, a lot is moving in droves to Texas, especially Austin and Dallas, right? So a lot of people moving. So the migration is strong, but we're looking, the population is still going to grow. So it's all about where are you purchasing properties? There, some places will be hit, um, will be hit pretty bad. New York City is already, already seeing crazy hit, hits over there. But because we are conservatively underwriting properties that the market has good um, fundamentals, we are not overly worried, concerned, but not worried about the assets that we are putting, we're submitting LOI for. Because look, um, a place like Huntsville, Alabama, which is our favorite market, it is, it is projected to be the number one city to live post COVID because of the, the quality of job that, that is there and also the level of education that is there. So for the next three years, a lot of, a lot of um, cities will, will be hurting. But when you look at um, things, the high 35 deadline um, over in Austin, right? East Florida area, Austin is booming. So when you talk about population growth and Tesla moving into Austin, investing in, in Austin, chances are you're gonna come out on the win and end in the next few years. So it's all about buying a market that has good fundamentals and buying the, in the, in the pathway of growth. Did I answer your question? Thank you. Any more questions? Going once, going twice. Okay, so um, thank you, Hutch. Thank you, great presentation. Um, if you guys want to see a replay, uh, this will be on um, um, my uh, YouTube page, All In Homes. Uh, I will have a link for that uh, if you guys want to see it. Um, so let me let me let me uh, say a couple of things before we go to um, breakout rooms. Um, number one is uh, I think everybody on here is a is a real estate investor. Maybe I have um, my my friend Teresa, she's the only person I know who who I who I know it doesn't really get into real estate like that. Or she's learning. So I just want to say this. Um, if you want to learn more about real estate, uh, I have a couple of um, uh, groups that you can attend that you'll get a lot of education from, uh, especially military wise. And I would say one is active duty passive income, ADPI. Uh, really good guys. That's that's this is the reason why they're the reason why I met Hutch. Uh, so I heard uh, um, these two guys on the podcast. Uh, so ADPI has, has some really good information. Another uh, another real estate minded uh, investment group is called White Feathers. They're based out of California. Really good couple of guys to talk to them as well. Um, and then also seven figure flipping um, with Bill Allen. Um, so if you guys want to learn more, please, please uh, let me know. On the civilian side, there is plenty, but um, I think the number one thing is, is bigger pockets. Uh, you know, that's that's a really really big one right there as well. Um, also, and let me let me let me go back because uh, Angel did did correct me on something. Um, I am, and I don't know why I didn't say this, but um, I'm part of something. It's called uh, the War Room Mastermind Group with David Pereira. Uh, we we have a weekly meeting. Very good, good. It's more of a mastermind group. Um, 